Okay, so I have a puzzle for you. We've got a hexagon here, and I want to know how many ways can you draw in three non-intersection diagonals of a hexagon to split it up into four triangles? So here's an example, and we're going to count rotations as different. So this is not going to be the same as, say, this one. The question is, how many ways are there in total? The answer is 14. So we can think about this one. We get six rotations of this one. Then we also have this one where we have a little zigzag. And again, this has six rotations. And the remaining two are triangles, our little equilateral triangle ones. So this gives 14 ways in total. It does beg the question, what about if we use a pentagon, for example? Uh, we want to look one level simpler. So this time, instead of splitting into four triangles with three lines, I'm going to split it into three triangles with two lines. And hopefully you believe me that this is one way and that the other ways are all going to be rotations of this. So there are five ways in total. Okay, going back, level simpler, a square. Well, there are going to be two of these. Now we use one line to split it into two triangles. So there are two ways. A triangle, we use no lines to split it into one triangle. And there's one way of doing that. And I'm even going to say a 2D shape, and we're going to split it into no triangles. And we're going to say there's one way of doing that as well. So we've got a little pattern here. One, one, two, five, 14. I've got another problem for you now. Um, now this is going to talk about something called binary trees. So binary trees, we start at a node, and at each point, you can either choose to do nothing or split it. So here, this is called a binary tree of order three because down here, we've got three nodes at the bottom. Now, another binary tree of order three might look like this. And in fact, these are, these are the only two binary trees of order three. How many binary trees do we think there are of order four? Well, we start drawing them. We've got one like this. We can then maybe do that. Oh, and we can reflect this one now. So then we get this. And we can also reflect this one. Oh, and actually there is one more we can get. So I'm fairly confident these are all of them. There are five. For completeness sake, <laughs> of order two, there is precisely one. And of order one, there is also just one. So again, we've got one, one, two, five. Do you want to have a guess at how many binary trees of order five there are? There are actually 14 binary trees of order five. So the pattern is one, one, two, five, 14. Hmm, which is the same as this one. So this third problem involves something called, you've got to get the German pronunciation right, Dieck words, named after the mathematician Dieck, pronounced with a long I sound in the middle. So Dieck words are made up of the same number of X's and Y's, but there's a rule. Um, at no point in the word can you have had more Y's than X's before that point. So for example, something like X, X, Y, Y is allowed. Something like X, Y, Y, X is not allowed. Because at this point, if we cut it off here, there are two Y's and only one X's. So the number of X's must be greater than or equal to the number of Y's at all points in a sequence. So how many Deke words are there for certain lengths? Well, if we have none of each, I guess that there's one. One way of having the empty deke word, I'll just draw a box to symbolize that is here. If we have one x, one y, it has to be x then y, because if it's y then x, then we've got more y's than x's. What about if we have two of each? Well, we can have x, x, y, y. We could also have x, y, x, y. We can't have x, y, y, x, as I've said, and it's gonna have to start with an x. If it starts with a y, then we failed at the first step. Now, what about with three of each? So we can have x, 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 y, y, y. We could have x, x, y, x, y, y. We could also actually have x, x, y, y, x, y. How about x, y, x, x, y, y. And then we can alternate. We can have x, y, x, y, x, y. Okay, these are all the deep words with three x's and three y's. Now, do you want to try guessing how many deep words there are with four x's and four y's? It's 14. So we've got this one, one, two, five, 14 pattern again. So there must be something special about these numbers. And these actually have a special name. They're called the Catalan numbers. But 
first, I want to look into why these problems are all the same, um, because we can actually show it um, in a really cool way. So I'm going to draw in the rest of these pentagons, just so that we can use the pentagons as an example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label some of the edges of the pentagons. And these edges are going to form my nodes. So they're going to form these bits at the bottom of the binary tree. It's going to become clear soon. And then actually, we've got some interior nodes here as well. So let's draw these in. And these are going to be within the triangles. This currently might seem a bit confusing. However, let's now join up the lines going step by step. So at this point, we can see we've got one interior node. We can only go through edges. And if you imagine this uncoiling, we're going to end up with this. because We've still got our dots in exactly the same place and our endpoints in exactly the same place. So these two represent the same thing. Similarly, if we get this one, okay, uncoiled, this one's going to look like this one uncoiled. We can do this with all of them. So it makes sense that these represent the same things in different ways, which is why we have the same pattern. Okay, what about these two now? Well, for this, I'm actually going to label the little edges between nodes, and I'm going to label them X if they go left, and Y if they go right. First we go X, then we have to go through an X to get there, and we have to go through an X to get there. The next one, X, but we've already ticked that one off. X, Y, tick this Y off. To get here, X we've ticked off, Y, and this one is just Y. So this can represent X, 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 Y, 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 which is this code. So this one, first node, got to go through X, then X to get there. The next node, we go X, Y, that's not ticked off, X. Now to get to this one, X, Y, Y, and then we've got Y. So this X, X, Y, X, Y, Y is this code. And actually all of these binary trees represent a deek word <laughs> like that. So these, again, are different ways of representing the same thing, which is why we end up with the same answer. And that is these Catalan numbers. We need a formula for them. We like formulas in maths. We like to know how we can name these patterns. Um, and for this, I'm going to get another bit of paper. And actually, I'm going to look at it through the deke words. If we have n x's and n y's, well, in total, that's, that's two n characters, isn't it? And we want to pick which of the n spaces are going to be x's. So in general, there are two n, choose n words with n x's and n y's. But not all of these are going to be deek words. So we're going to have to work out how we can do that. Let's look at an example. Try x, y, y, x. This isn't a deek word, but I'm going to do a neat little trick. And I'm going to add an x before it. So why am I doing this? Well, it kind of makes our condition easier. Because before, the condition was that the number of x's is greater than or equal to the number of y's at any point in the sequence. Adding an extra x before means that for the last four digits to be a deke word, then for the whole sequence, the number of x's needs to be strictly greater than the number of y's. So we're making this condition slightly more specific. And actually, the definition for here of this criteria is it's dominating. Now there's a really cool trick you can do here because we're going to cycle this round through all the cycles. So we've got x, x, y, y, x. We're going to move this x to the beginning. So we'll have x, x, this x goes here, this y goes here, y goes there. And finally, x, y, y, x, x. So we've got five different cycles of our original word. And the cool thing is that exactly one of them has this property. Um, in this case, it is this one. So this one doesn't, because if you think at this point, we've got two x's, two y's, so they're equal. So we don't have that greater than condition. But this is the case where precisely one of them is dominating and has this property. And it's always going to be the case that of these cycles, exactly one of them is dominating. And then we can get rid of our actual x. And from this, we know, because it's the same condition, that, well, 1 over n plus 1 of the possible arrangements are deke words. So this means that our formula for the Catalan numbers is 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n. Well, wow. There's still more you can say. I could sit here and talk for about an hour about Catalan numbers, but there is, 
I think one final thing that I'm going to bring up, um, those of you who are interested, there are iterative formulas you can find out about, ways to relate Cn to Cn plus 1. But this can also be written as 2n choose n minus 2n choose n minus 1. Whenever I see something like this with um, choose notation, something combinatorial, I think Pascal's triangle. Where is this in Pascal's triangle? Um, and this is where it becomes cool. So, <laughs> unfortunately, my friends have been subjected to so many Pascal's triangles talks. I think I gave my first when I was about 12. Funnest place I've told a friend about Pascal's triangle is when we were climbing a mountain. Um, I had it written out on my hand so that I could explain what was going on. Um, and she actually enjoyed it. She asked for it that time. So if you ever want a Pascal's triangle talk, there's never a time when I am not ready. Okay, running out of space slightly, but this will do. The question is, where do the Catalan numbers appear in Pascal's triangle? And this little minus sign is the key because um, they actually appear this column and subtracting this column. So 1 minus 0 is our first one. 2 minus 1 is our second one. 6 minus 4 gives the 2. This gives the 5. And to finally finish off 70 minus 56, it is 14. Yes. So that is the Catalan numbers. Here are the first 30 Catalan numbers you can see they escalate. Now, if expanding your mind is something you'd like to do, well, brilliant.org is the place to do it. This is an absolute smorgasbord of courses, quizzes, and curated content. It's all interactive, very clever. It's designed to make you smarter. Whether it's mathematics, computer science, chemistry, physics, you name it, they've got you covered. It's fun, it's smart, it's created by people who know their stuff. I've recently started checking out these little bonus puzzles, I really like them. Have a look at this. If you keep stacking these circles forever, will the blue or yellow area be greater? Or will they be the same? I've been thinking about it, and now I'm about to find out if I was right. This is a great place to hang out just to flex your brain cells. You can do a free 30-day trial with Brilliant. You can also get 20% off their full premium service by going to brilliant.org slash number file. I'll put a link in the video description so you can click right on that if you like. I'm not entirely sure what these guys are doing, but all right. Oh, and by the way, you can also give Brilliant as a gift, a nice present for that learner in your life, perhaps. Our thanks to Brilliant for supporting number file. n things and I want to choose k of them, how many different ways can I do that? And it turns out that Pascal's triangle, this really like childlike adding game as it seems to be, actually encodes n choose k. So if I have n things, in particular let's say I have four things, 